Magazine presents the legendary drummer from the band Hell Yeah, Vinny Paul. Vinny Paul calls into the Carson Drive Studios to talk to Ferg about the new album, the new tour, and everything Hell Yeah. Now let's get to the interview. This is Ferg with SRO Magazine, and we are talking to Vinny Paul. Hey, brother, thank you very much, first of all, for uh, calling in and talking to us. We're very excited at SRO Magazine that you wanted to talk to Ferg. Cool, man. Well, let's get to it. Hell yeah's new album, Blood for Blood, hits the shelves June 10th, but you can pre-order it now on iTunes. And the single, Sangre por Sangre, Blood for Blood, is out now, and it's on iTunes as well, and it's everything you've loved about Hell Yeah, hard, fast, loud, and aggressive. Mr. Vinny Paul, thank you for taking the time. Tell us about the new album, Blood for Blood, and kind of how it came together. Man, I feel like it's our most complete album today. I think it's the one that really uh, brings the hell yeah sound that we've been looking for to the table. You know, it's been taking us a while to get to where we were going. Uh, the first couple of albums were very experimental for us. They were a way for us to really step outside of what we'd done in our previous bands and do something different, man, and really explore on some, you know, southern rock, uh, a little bit of country at times, uh, heavy metal, rock and roll right down the middle. Really, we put no boundaries on it, and we got that out of our system. And with the, the last record, Band of Brothers, uh, we really got back to our metal roots and really kind of made the record that I believe people were expecting from us from the start. And then with this record, it's just a complete continuation of the, the metal vibe and the metal roots that we started with. And uh, we brought in an outside producer, Kevin Cherko, to work with us, and uh, I think he really got the very best out of us, and we just really feel like uh, this is a special record, and uh, we're excited about it. Now, the first uh, release is Sangre por Sangre, and I do like saying that because it makes me sound smarter. It really does. <laughs> it's the first release, and, and dude, it, it rocks. I mean, it is, it's in your face, and it's, it's everything you've loved about Hell Yeah. What's been the reaction from, you know, besides myself, the other Hell Yeah fans? Oh, man, you know, so far I think the reaction's been absolutely uh, stellar. You know, so like, uh, you know, anybody that has ever been a Hell Yeah fan is going to love this record. Anybody that was on the fence about Hell Yeah will listen to it, will love this record. And anybody that didn't care for Hell Yeah, if you'll give it a listen, I think you're going to be blown away with this record. So uh, we feel great. The response has been great. We've been doing some of the songs live, and uh, they go down just as good as the songs that we've been doing for a while. And, uh, you know, we're excited for June 10th to get here so we can get the, the rest of the record out there and start playing more songs off the record live. Well, your talented frontman, Chad Gray, said that uh, you were, quote, wanting to shut people up when uh, you wrote this album. Were you uh, going after it with a little bit more gusto, a little bit more of an attitude, maybe, you know, somewhat of a little chip on your shoulder? I think, uh, you know, from the start, we kind of felt like we've been in an underdog role all the way across the board, you know, and uh, we really, really brought everything that we had to the table on this record, and we really wanted to make a, a record that would be a career-changing record for us, you know, that would really help push the band over the top, you know, and uh, for that to happen, we had to write the very best songs we've ever written. Uh, we needed the direction to be very, very focused, and, uh, you know, we wanted the production to be the best production we've ever had, and that's why we brought Kevin in. Well, you're a, an awesome producer in your own right. I mean, you do a fabulous job. As a matter of fact, you guys produced the first three Hell Yeah albums in-house. But as you said in Recording Blood for Blood, you brought in famed producer Kevin Cherko, who has worked with Ozzy and Five Finger Death Punch. Now, how was it for you as a producer to give up the reins of control and, and work with somebody, you know, somewhat calling the shots on certain situations? I thought it was awesome, you know. I... We did all the pre-production at my house like we've done for the previous records and really all the music beds were laid and, and really the drum parts and the music didn't change much, you know. Uh, but once we got to working with Kevin, it was great for me to be mainly a drummer, you know, to go in and, and do my very best, get the very best drum takes and then I could leave and go away for seven or eight hours and come back later that night and really hear how the songs were starting to take shape and then you know, kind of put my producer hat on again at that point and throw my two cents worth in there. But uh, Kevin's the kind of guy that, you know, he makes the record that you want to make. He doesn't make the record that he wants to make, you know, and he's really, really uh, in tune with what we were looking for with this record, and uh, he really helped us get where we were going, man. Well, you said on, on the song Say When that uh, you pushed your, your drumming to the limit. You went all out and, and created just that crazy drum part. Was was it because you were able just to, you know, be free and, and give up that that you were able to devote a little bit more to what you're going to play? 
I, I think that, you know, I wanted to bring more to it. I know that, uh, you know, the, like I said, the first couple of Hell Yeah records were really more simplified on the drums than what people are used to hearing me play, and that's because of the style of the music, you know, but once we got back into doing the more aggressive stuff, uh, you know, it calls for a little more drumming and a little more uh, stuff. And anytime you can come up with something that's really unique and different, like Say When or something like uh, Primal Country Sledge in the Pantera Days or even Becoming, uh, those are gems, man. They're hard to come across, you know. And so uh, when I came across that, that groove, you know, I had the idea of how I wanted the guitars to go over the top. Went in and just uh, laid it down, you know. It's going to be a challenge to play it live because uh, it takes everything you got to belt that out. You know, I don't want to be huffing and puffing for a little air when we get done, <laughs> but that's all good. I love that kind of stuff. On the new album, uh, most of us have only heard the uh, Sangra por Sangra, uh, Blood for Blood. But uh, of the other material, what's that in-your-face, pissed-off song that the crowd's going to love? Uh, there's several, man. But, you know, we've been playing Demons in the Dirt live, which is amazing. Across the Bears, the other one that came out is kind of like the metal single that's been out there floating around. And of course, St. Lynn is a, just a, a face grinder all the way across. And uh, it's, it's a really uh, deep record as far as, uh, you know, heaviness is not always measured in speed or uh, aggression or whatever. It could be measured in the, the, the depth of the vocals or the mood or whatever. And this record really does have stuff on it that is, takes you on a true roller coaster ride, man. It's got peaks and valleys, and it goes. You know, really fast, and it comes down and slows down. It just kind of gives you a minute to catch your breath, and then hits you right in the face again. Is this one of these albums that you uh, record, you know, and you take a few days after you finish recording and uh, cleanse the palate? And then when you go back and listen to the music, you everybody looks around and says, damn, we just made something great. We, we felt like it was very special when it was done. You know, we feel like uh, it's our back in black, you know. It's, it's the kind of record that we feel like it is. You know, you put on back in black, you don't want to take it off. You know, it's one of those kind of records. And uh, So far, the reaction to this record's been the same way, and uh, I love every song on it, man. It's, it's hard for me to pick a, pick a favorite, you know, because, I mean, every one of them is like uh, your firstborn son or something. You know, you just, you just love it to death. Man. Well, do you have a favorite that you play live? See, that's hard for me to pick, man. I, mean, I was wondering. Uh, you no, know, I, I like, I really, I really love them all, man. And, uh, you know, the, the three that we're doing live go down just as good as any of the other stuff that we've ever done, if not better. People don't really even know it yet. So, you know, once people really get familiar with it, I think it's really going to crush. Well, you're doing festivals right now, and uh, you've got a tour kicking off to support the new album. What can the, uh, what can the fans expect from the, from the show? Bigger, bolder, louder? Well, I mean, it's, 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 for us right now at the level that we're at you know it's about the band the fans the music and the circle of energy that we create and give back and forth to each other you know it's that's the most important thing about music you know and of course we're going to bring a hell of a live show with us and the sound is always going to be you know full on uh, we just uh, you know we're just now getting close to completing a leg that we're doing right now with Avenged Sevenfold and uh, they've been really great to us about you know letting us use enough production to really have a great show and then uh, we just announced our brand new tour today. Uh, it starts in September. It's Five Finger Death Punch, Bull Beat, Hell Yeah, and nothing more. So uh, it's a great tour for the record, uh, perfect timing for us. Uh, we go to Europe before that. So uh, we're really excited about being part of that tour. Uh, you recently had a lineup change. You added uh, bassist Kyle Sanders. How did uh, Kyle get on your radar, and, and what kind of dy dynamic does he bring to the band? Well, uh, you know, myself, Chad, and Tom recorded the entire record by ourselves. Uh, you know, we, we just, we had a clean house. We had a couple of guys that just weren't focused, and they were really uh, becoming a distraction to the band. And then for us to make the record that we made, we, we kind of had to just get rid of them, you know, just shake ourselves loose of that. And uh, we made the record, and we said, once the record's done, we'll, we'll put the live version of the band together. And when we finished, we really didn't want to go through any kind of, auditioning process or anything, trying to find the next Billy Sheehan or the next, you know, Eddie Van Halen on guitar. We wanted to bring people in that we thought would really fit in with us. And uh, Kyle had been in Blood Simple and Monstro and uh, toured mm -hmm. with us many times. And we always got along great and we always admired his bass playing. He always had a hell of a showmanship on stage. And uh, we gave him a buzz and he was ready to go right out of the sheet. And then we also brought in our touring guitarist. Uh, Chris Brady, a good buddy of ours from Las Vegas, who's also a, an amazing right. guitar player, great singer, and really compliments the band. And honestly, I don't think the band's ever sounded better, man. It just really feels great. Uh, there's a lot of great new energy. There's all nothing but positive energy, and the band is really focused. 
When you guys put together a song, uh, how does it evolve? I mean, is there somebody who handles lyrics and melody line, or is it a group evolution? Well, it's, it's always a, a group process, but, you know, with this record, myself and Tom wrote all the music, and Chad writes the lyrics, and, and the melodies all get worked on in the studio and all that good stuff, and, of course, that's when the producer comes in as a big help, a big help you know, And uh, but it is truly a, a group process, and it's not ever been anything where... Uh, and one of us walks in and says, here's my song, let's do this. You know, it's always right. been uh, a group thing, and, and that really gets the very best out of everybody. You know, if you look back at the Van Halen records back in the day, that it's an all songs written by, you know, Eddie, Alex, Dave, and Michael. You know, that everybody got credit, and, and that makes everybody put that much more into it, whereas, you know, a lot of bands, uh, one gal can and want all his songs recorded because he wants to make all the money. They want to share anything with anybody, you know, and, uh, it's, it's so much better when it's a group effort. Now you've been uh, since your early days. You've been in, you've been in this business for a long time, and uh, since your early days of you know getting big with Pantera. And what's the big biggest difference you've seen between the music business of before and the music business today? Oh, it's it's one hundred percent different. I mean, there's really no grassroots thing. I mean, you know, the way we built Pantera was through playing live, you know, we had no radio, no MTV support, no anything. I mean, we built it through word of mouth. It was before the internet existed and all that. I mean, people would just have to go tell their friends and they would tell two of their friends and they would tell five of their friends. And that's really how it built, you know, and today it's, it's all about social media, you know, it's all about being built uh, immediately, you know, through the internet. And if you're not, you know, successful right out of the sheet, you know, these, these record companies and stuff, they don't, they don't have any time and any patience to build things. So it's, it's truly totally different, man. Well, I've been a fan since, I mean, way back since Projects in the Jungle. So I've seen your music and what you've been in from Pantera to Damage Plan to now. And uh, in your opinion, the evolution of your music and, and what you write and what you play, is it all culminated into this? I mean, you may do something better down the road, but do you think it all has, all of your experiences has come to this and this is, you know, the finest thing you've done so far? I, I you know, I'm a firm believer that if you live in the past, you have no future, you know, and I'm really proud of everything we did in the past. I mean, we did some incredible stuff with Pantera and achieved things that no other bands have ever done. And, right. Uh, I'm not going to sit back and go, wow, you know, I had a number one record in 1994 and I beat out it. Bonnie Ray and Ace of Bass, and, you know, I did all that, you know, and, and that's my claim to fame, you know, no, nah, I want to move forward, I want, hell yeah, I want this record to be the record that, you know, puts me on the map right now in 2014, and, and really, that's what matters to me. Well, you've been the inspiration or the influence to literally hundreds of thousands of drummers, I mean, they're sitting out there going, you know, their God's Vinnie Paul, and they, you know, watch what you do, and they practice, and, and they try to learn your techniques and stuff. What's the what's the one big piece of advice that uh, you would give the up and coming, uh, soon to be rock drummer? Ah man, you just gotta love what you do. You know, you really have to have a passion for it. And if you're gonna play in a band and, and really try to make it, you're gonna have to dedicate everything you have to it, man. You know, you can't just kind of dabble in it or half-ass it. You know, it really takes everything you got, and then you gotta get lucky, man. I mean, that's probably the, the biggest element out of anything in the music business you know it doesn't matter how good you are sometimes it's all about being in the right place at the right time or the right person seeing you or something like that you know so uh you gotta you gotta be prepared and ready but you know sometimes those opportunities never come you know and it's it's really is a a tough thing and uh you know i wish everybody the very best and just if you're gonna do it you gotta put your heart into it and give it everything you got man well, you know anybody and everybody that's in the rock and roll world. I mean, you guys have partied and, and gone from one side of the world to the other. What's your favorite band that uh, that you hung out with or partied with? What's what's one that you enjoyed the most? Well, uh, you know, all the, the up-and-coming bands that toured with Pantera were always a blast. They were always looked up to us, and we were one of the only bands that really lived the party lifestyle. You know, when I toured with, you know, Black Sabbath and bands like that, Judas Priest, uh, they, don't, they don't party, they don't, they don't have, you know, it doesn't seem like it's a lot of fun for them anymore, you know, and that's kind of something that's a, a bummer to me, you know, to me, rock and roll's always been about, you know, excesses and, and a good time, you know, and really, it's turned uh, real corporate and real safe and really doesn't have the edge that it once had. 
Well, we are right thick in the middle of uh, the festival season, and you guys are knee-deep in it, too. You've had several. You've got Rocklahoma coming up and uh, some others. Uh, how is it to perform for 20, 30, 40,000 of your closest friends? Oh, yeah, man, festivals are great. You know, we just did uh, Carolina Rebellion this past weekend. We did a huge one in Florida uh, right. the week before that. Uh, we got Rocklahoma coming up. We got a bunch of big festivals down in Texas. They're they're always exciting and always a lot of fun to play. And uh, you know, you always run into bands that you haven't seen in a while, crew guys that you haven't seen in a while. So that always makes it extra special. And then you know, to get that many people together to to you know celebrate music and just to have a day of good time is just awesome. Man. Well, I will be at the Rocklahoma show, so hopefully I'll be able to get a picture and shake your hand and maybe an autograph or something. I like I said, I've been a fan for. A, well, a long time. I don't want to say how long because it <laughs> dates me, but a long time. Hey, I read that Peter Chris is one of your uh, one of your main influences when you were growing up, and and you, as I, were members of the Kiss Army. How great was it to see them get into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? That was awesome, man. You know, I mean, there's a uh, a lot of travesty that kind of goes along with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I mean, Deep Purple should be in there. It's right. Incredible. Excellent. Now, speaking of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, do you ever think bands like, you know, Pantera or Megadeth or Slayer or some of those uh, iconic bands will get in? Honestly, you know, I've been to the, the, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame a couple of times. They actually had one of my brother's guitars in there. And I just don't think that they have the least bit of respect for hard rock and heavy metal, and, and in particular heavy metal. I think, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think we'll ever get in there. I, I just can't picture that, man. I just don't see it sitting in with the Madonnas and things that they want to call. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Okay, I've only got a few more questions, and then my time will be up. But uh, of the new music that's out, is there anything that's grabbing your attention, That uh, anything that you're digging? Uh, you know, I really had not checked out a whole lot of new stuff lately just because I've been so focused on the mm-hmm. new record. And then once we finished it, uh, you know, a little air out of time, and now that we're on the road again. But, you know, I really do dig Vince Sevenfold's new record. I think it's really killer. Uh, it's great being on tour with him right now. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of good stuff out there, and, and I'm going to get more and more familiar with it. I really dig uh, Chino Marino's new thing, Crosses, that he put uh-huh. out. It's really different, and it's a cool, uh, it's not really heavy, but it's kind of a cool Zen vibe record. Excellent. Well, Mr. Vinny Paul, our time has come to an end. I do appreciate you uh, taking time out of your busy schedule. I know you are busy to uh, to uh, talk to Ferg. And uh, SRO Magazine is extremely excited about you coming on. We're big fans of your work. Hey, why don't you uh, let all the uh, readers know just how they can get a hold of Hell Yeah. Hell Yeah. All right. Go to hellyeahband.com and we'll see you at Rock, Oklahoma on Friday night. All right. Thank you very much, sir. And if there's anything you need, just let us know. All right, brother. Cheers. Hey, thanks, brother. I really do want to thank uh, Vinnie Paul and all the members and the management of Hell Yeah for uh, taking the time out. And, of course, their press management. And, uh, Greg, you were awesome. This is Ferg with SRO Magazine, and I'm out. For more information on the band Hell Yeah, set to go to hellyeahband.com. And for all your music and entertainment news, you know where to go. Go to SRO. That's S-R-O mag I-N-C dot com. S-R-O magazine is sponsored by Carson Drive Studios, Kick-Ass Cables, PhD Radio dot com, Roberts Guitar, TDL Music dot com, Johnny B.